Let's talk about a very important topic, and that is the use of layers. What are layers? Why do you want to use layers, and how are they applied? Layers are another organizational technique. It's something that you can use to separate the objects in your diagram so that you can better manage it. It especially becomes important, and it especially becomes important when you have tons of objects out there. I'm going to keep this really simple so that for those of you who aren't familiar with layers, it'll be readily apparent what layers are and how to use them. And to keep it simple, I've got four objects and four objects only on my page. I've got a green square, yellow circle, blue triangle, and a red heart. And these four objects we'll be referring to as square, circle, triangle, heart. You'll see in just a moment. In order to look at my layers, I need to open up the Object Manager. So I'm going to go up to the Window menu, grab hold of the Dockers, fly out, and choose the Object Manager. Let me just do a Shift F4. Now in the Object Manager, because we have a multi-page document, you can see the layers associated with each and every page, and it's kind of overwhelming. So what I'd like you to do if you're doing this, if you're following along with me here, is to access this pop-out menu and just go down to Show Pages. Show Pages will collapse everything down to just a page view. And then we can go back in and look at just the page we want, which is 22 layers. Expand that, and I'll expand Layer 1. Here's an important thought. First of all, you can tell what layer you're working on because it's highlighted in red. Right over here you can see it's highlighted in red. Now, I'm viewing the objects that are on my working page in two different ways right now. I can see them as we're used to seeing them over here, and I can also see them in the Object Manager here in this list. And as you can see, I've named them, and I had to name them because by default, they're named, you know, Ellipse 1, Rectangle 1, <laughs> the triangle is a polygon, and the heart is a perfect shape, as you can see from the icon that's used to represent it. So I took away those names and I renamed them Heart, Triangle, Circle, and Square. Now look at the order that they appear. If I asked you to tell me which of these objects was on top and which was in behind, you'd probably be able to guess that we have our heart on top, triangle, circle, square. And look over here. Heart, triangle, circle, square. It's exactly the order they appear in. If I select the circle on my working page, it selects the circle in my list in the Object Manager. If I select the heart in the Object Manager, it selects the heart on the working page. And my point here is that what you see on the right-hand column in this Docker is exactly what's happening here on our page. This is the list view, very detailed list view, and you can see lots of information relative to these objects out here to the right tells you their precise fill color, the outline color. It tells you how thick the border is or how thick the outline is for this object. It's all listed there. You can control that view. You can increase and decrease the number amount of information, but let's just focus on the details here. Now, as it is, looking at these objects in the Object Manager can be useful in itself. If you have a ton of objects, you've got some that you think you've lost or you think you have extra objects and you want to just locate them, looking at a list view of them can be very, very useful. But the power of organizing your illustrations really comes when you add layers. So let me do that now. I'm going to go to the bottom of the Object Manager, and I'm going to add new layers. And I'm going to add three new layers. One, two, three. So now I have layers one, two, three, and four. And you can see as I create the layers, it was giving me an opportunity to name them. I'm not going to take that opportunity now. I'm just going to leave them as layers one, two, three, and four. And I'm going to drag these objects off of layer one and place them onto these other layers. So for the heart, I'm going to drag that and drop it on layer 4. The triangle on layer 3, circle on layer 2, and I'll leave the square on layer 1. Now nothing's changed here. Our view of the objects haven't really been affected. But each object now has its own layer, an entire layer. Think of layers like sheets of paper that are stacked one on top of each other, only they're more like transparencies because you can see through them. Anything that's on the layer you see, and any area of the layer that's open, you can see through. So over here now, I'm going to look at some of my options that I have for affecting the layers. For example, these three icons indicate layer visibility. 
layer printability, and layer editability. If I turn the visibility of a layer off, that object or all of the objects on that layer disappear. Now I can effectively work on the remaining objects without having to worry about that object getting in the way or being accidentally edited. And when I turn it back on, it reappears. And I can do that for any number of these objects. I can turn them all off, working with one at a time, or I can turn any number of them on, any combination. It just gives me some flexibility over how I'm working. If I'd like to keep them visible, I can turn the editability off. And now, see, I can't select that triangle. As a matter of fact, when I click on the triangle in an area that there's something underneath, it goes right through it as though it doesn't exist. The editability switch allows me to maintain the objects on those layers without having to worry about accidentally affecting them again, but I still see the other objects that are on other layers relative to the objects that I have locked. Turn that off. And the last thing I'm going to talk about when it comes to layers, and hopefully you understand how layers can help you organize your drawings. And there's lots more we could say about it, but that's a good overview. The other thing I want to say is a master layer. Now I have a master layer created in this file. Let me go down to the master page. The master page is where it contains your guides, the desktop, which is this area that falls outside of the page, and the grid. I don't want to talk too much about that right now, but the master page, essentially anything that exists in the master page, exists on all pages within a multi-page file. So here you can see we have 23 pages, and if I open up the master header, which is something that I created to put this header information, every page has the Corel Draw 12 getting started with these two triangular strips and the nuts and bolts which is meant to be a comment about the fact that we're dealing with just the nuts and bolts of using draw right now. If I turn the editability back on, well now I can select these objects that I've used in my header. Let me just do that. I'll move these objects over a little bit. Here, I'll overlap them with the word started. And now if I move back a page, you see the header information has been changed on each and every page within this file because it exists on the master page and on a layer within the master page that takes care of these objects for me and applies them to each page in my multi-page layout. So here we go down here at the bottom of the object manager. This is creating a new master layer. New layer within a page and a new master layer that affects the entire document on a global scale.